to our teacher. We thank God for each and every one of you that's on the line on tonight. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for what you have done and what you are doing right now, even in this season. There's so many things that's going on, oh God. But you already know. You know what to do, you know how to do, and you know when to do. And we just ask them that you would just come in and overtake every situation, oh God. Even as Mother Kid was saying, her sister is back in the hospital, Lord. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you're able to do it. And we know that you can. Oh God, we thank you tonight. Even with this lesson tonight, where two or three are joined together praying. Oh God, we know that you hear our prayer. Do what you need to do tonight, oh God. Bless your people everywhere. Bless our teacher tonight. Give them what to say. Oh God. We thank you for it. Bless everyone under the sound of our voice. Look on our president tonight, oh God. Bless her. Bless her daughter, oh God, and her son-in-law. Oh God, and we thank you for it. We thank you because you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And Lord, we want to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. 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 God bless you on tonight. Tonight we are on lesson seven, the third week, lesson seven. Amen. And our lesson tonight, the prayer of agreement. And we thank God for this lesson. The central verse, I'm just going to read that and then we'll turn it over to the hands of our teacher. The central verse says um, in Matthews, the 18th chapter in the 19th verse. Again, I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. We thank God for the central verse. Once again, the prayer of agreement. At this time, you're in the hands of our teacher. Let us say amen for Sister Angie. God bless you. At this amen. Time. Amen, Pastor. And God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Cotton. And to and give honor to God and to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the presence of the Holy Spirit holding me up and keeping me. I uh, thank God for each and every one of you, the First Lady, our Mother Peace, First Lady Cotton, hello, and, and our, all of our teachers, Sister Dow, and we got a lot of teachers that's going to be some helping me on tonight and, and uh I call them my lifeline so join in and and, and 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 um add to it let's take it further uh you have more than I do and, and maybe I have a little more than you but we put it all together and, and make it you know we want to grow amen we want to get from where we are and go further that's what the bible wants us to do that's what god wants us to do to grow in the knowledge of his truth God bless each and every one of you. Good to see you on tonight. And so we're going to get right on into our lesson. But before we get into our lesson, because we have a good lesson, and um, you notice that all of our lessons have been talking about prayer. So I do pray that you've been really tuning in with your heart and your mind and, and taking it in and growing there by letting it take a little at a time and add to what you already know and add it to your prayer life and, and add it to your conversation about Jesus Christ and, and your, your knowledge and understanding. And it's all about growing. Amen. It's a growing process and we're all at different stages, but we're all learning at the same time. So at some point in time, there's something that we all should have in common in our knowledge, you know, through all of these teachings. And so I hope you're taking it in. And so before I get, um, do I see, before I get started, there, our lesson last, last week was very good and it was on the peace of God, praying for the peace of God. And, um, there was a question that came up after. It says prayers for peace that came up after our lesson. And I'm going to, um, let Elder Bass and I, 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 text him that question and I 
uh, I asked him if he would um, just give us that question. I, I thought it was something that we, we can all uh, add to our understanding as well, especially about the peace of God. So I'm going to give him this time and then we'll get right into our lesson. He has a question that has been given to him and he's going to share that and his answer to the question. He was the teacher last Tuesday, so and this was his. So Elder Baxton, if you will. Amen. God bless you, Sister Angie. Um, so there was a question that was uh, that was posed, and uh, Sister Angie brought it to my attention. And the question was, how do you know if you're experiencing the peace of God, or if it's just numbness, or the suppressing of your feelings? Uh, which gives you a false sense of peace. And um, I think that's a good question for us to understand because um, a lot of times we feel like uh, we are experiencing uh, peace when it's not actually peace. Um, it's us suppressing certain things that go on in our lives or us just feeling numb to certain things that happens to us. So um, just to identify the difference between experiencing the peace of God and this numbness, so to speak, uh, the difference between the two is that there is either a presence of hope or an absence of hope, all right? So when you experience the peace of God, there is a presence of hope that comes with that. When we're talking about numbness or suppressing feelings, there is an absence of hope that comes with that, all right? Um, you know, if you experience chaos, distress, some of those words that we talked about that are the opposite of peace, um, it no longer affects you in a way where it pushes you to endure with hope. It's just like it is what it is. Oh, well, I just got to deal with it. There's not a positive uh, connotation that comes with this. Uh, numbness is to say I no longer care because things will never change. All right. So I'm just going to push this thing down and I'm just going to go through it because I got to go through it. Right. And that's not the same as experiencing the peace of God. And that's not the representation of the peace of God. So what suppression uh, it does is what you do is you take distress or you take chaos, whatever is going on in your life. You take that and then you blanket that. OK, you hide it, you push it down and then you go on living this life as if everything's OK when you're still holding these things on the inside. All right. That's a false sense of peace because you're telling yourself I'm OK when you know you're not OK. And it's easy for you to tell people that. Right. Because it's easy to put a smile on your face and act like things are OK. All right. But when that blanket is unveiled, when you go home and you got to deal with what you have to deal with in your me time, when you go home and you're a long time, you find out that that peace is not really the peace that you think it is because you're just blanking in it. You're hiding it. And the peace of God doesn't hide our turmoils. It doesn't hide our distress. It, it unveils it and it allows us to deal with those things. Right. So the peace of God isn't just a cover or something to mask pain, anxiety or stress. The peace of God is understanding that I always don't understand God's ways. Once you come into the conclusion that I don't understand God's ways all the time. All right. And I'm going through some things and it's OK for me to go through these things. But even though I don't understand, the key is that I have an expected hope which is what he told to Jeremiah. He'd give him an expected end, all right? As long as we have that hope, then that peace comes with that hope. And it's knowing that God is going to pull me out. He's going to bring me out of this thing. Isaiah 29 and three, I'm gonna give you these two scriptures. Isaiah 20, 26 and three, it says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee, all right? So he's saying, I'll keep you in per perfect peace, but your mind has to be on me, meaning that you can't hide all of these distresses, these anxieties, and at the same time be thinking about me. It's one or the other, because if you hide these things, you're putting these things and suppressing them on the inside. How can I fill you with peace when you already filled yourself with all of these things that you've been suppressing? That's not the peace of God, right? It's not the peace of God. The last verse I'll give you is Romans 15 and three. And it says, now the God of hope, you. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So you cannot separate God's joy and God's peace. 
you can suppress all these feelings and still put on a happy face. All right. You can fake happy. You can't fake joy because joy is from the Lord. It's a spirit from God. The Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right. Joy and peace go hand in hand. So when I have peace, guess what else I have? I have joy because I know I'm coming through. And when I have joy, guess what else I have? I have peace because I know that God is bringing me through. So just to sum it up, you know, you're experiencing the peace of God when you have the spirit of God and the joy of the Lord. And you're not letting these things fester on the inside and blanking in them, but you're filling yourself. Just like the scripture said, you're filled with joy. You're filling yourself with his presence and you don't have this false sense of peace. So that's just to answer that question. All right. And thank you, Sister Angie, for the opportunity and the time that you've allotted for me. Amen. Amen. If that blessed you, give the Lord a hand. <laughs> I know it blessed me. That was powerful. He answered that question. He laid it out to us. Um, Elder Baxter, I know I didn't ask this one, but while you were talking, I would, I, if you, if you would, can you give us your definition or your understanding of what it means to cast your cares onto, on the Lord? Yeah, no problem. Um, I was thinking of the scripture, uh, where he says, um, lay aside every weight in the sin that so easily besets you. All right. And that goes hand in hand with casting all your cares. Cares are the things that you worry about, the things that um, that you need, that things that you need, things that um, are always on your mind, these things that you care about. And what God is saying is take all of those cares and give them to me. Lay these things at the altar in return. Take me. Right. Take me. Put all of your faith in me. Put all of your thoughts in me. Put all of these these things that you need, put all of these things in me, because everything that we need is in him. So when we cast our cares upon him, you're saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. Right. So I'm giving you all of these things that are that I'm going through, all these things that are bothering me, all of these issues. I'm putting them all on you because he already took all of these things to the cross. And a lot of times we take those things back that he already took to the cross. He went to the cross so we wouldn't have to worry, that we wouldn't have to be anxious, that we wouldn't have to fear, that we wouldn't have to doubt. So he took those things to the cross. When we take those things back, he's saying, I already died for that. I already gave you an opportunity to live without these things. So give them back. Put them back where they belong and just take me. Believe and trust in me. So when we cast our cares upon him, we're saying, Lord, I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything that I have, I surrender it to you because once you surrender all of these things, Bob says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added. So that's what, in, in, in my opinion, that's what that means. Praise God. That was beautiful, Elder Baxson. You are a blessing to us and you are truly anointed. Only the Holy Spirit can, can pour out of our bellies like that. <laughs> that's the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly shall flow. And that's what was happening. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That helped me. God bless you all. So let's say good night. Let's go to sleep with that. <laughs> <My mind. laughs> oh, my goodness. That was powerful. Uh, we have a lesson tonight and I, I'm not going to. Uh, 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 I don't know what I'm not going to do or going to do. <laughs> let's see what the Lord does here. Uh, our topic. Uh, that, that was that was so good. Wow. Oh, glory be to God. That was good. That was needful. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our topic, the prayer of agreement. <laughs> when I first read this, I said the prayer of argument. And I closed it and I'm like, the prayer of argument? What am I, what kind of where could they be talking about? And it took me a while to get back to my book and I opened it up and I read it again and I, oh, the prayer of agreement. Okay, <laughs> that's different, amen. <laughs> but some people, I hear people say that they argue with God and I thought maybe it was going in that route. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, but I never argued with God that I know of, so what am I gonna say? But it's agreement, the prayer of agreement. And and in this lesson, it is going to be talking about the agreement between the sisters and the brothers meeting together in agreement for one cause, one purpose, 
and Jesus said he will be in the midst, meaning that we are in agreement with God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. We are in agreement with them. And if our agreement agrees with God, then they are in agreement with us. And so we're all on one on, on, on accord in whatever it is that we are praying about. And so um, we're going to see, we see that our lesson uh, central verse, uh, it says uh, um, in Math Matthew's, the 18th chapter, it says, again, I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. And and, and this is Jesus talking. He's talk, this is Jesus talking. Let's see. Let's uh, go to that. The 18th chapter of Matthews, and let's just. Um, it should be read. Um, the writing should be in red if you have a good, if you have a good study Bible or just, just, uh, not one of those that you get from the dollar store. It's all in black, but if you got a good one and that was good, it's a good practice when you go in and you read it and you highlight the red. Every time you see Jesus talking, you highlight it with red. That's a good practice. You get to uh, you get to know your Bible that way too. It's a good practice. All right, so get one of those Bibles. And uh, here we go. So it's the 18th chapter, 19. But I want to read that 18th verse. I mean, the 19th and the 18th. And keeping me in your prayers, I I, I know I've I've asked the Lord to bless me and to help me and to. To use me in his service. I'm not just stepping out on, on, on a, you know, whim saying I can do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 I love what Jesus said uh, when he was at Lazarus' uh, grave. He said, Lord, I've already prayed this prayer, but for their sake, for them to hear it, you know. <laughs> but yes, Lord. Uh, so anyway, uh, the 18th verse says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two or three shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them um, of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 24, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And that's Jesus talking. There am I. He said, my Father, which is in heaven. He said um, that in touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. And Jesus said, and if you come together, two or three, uh, he's just using that. He's talking about more than one. Uh, it can go up to how many people, but if you're coming together in agreement, he's in the midst. So he says his Father is involved and he's involved. And you know if the Father and the Son is involved, and we're there with the Holy Spirit living in us, we've got the Trinity working on our side, amen, working in us and with us. We're partnering with God as long as we're doing everything according to His will and His way and His plan, amen. And the things that come up in this world that we have to deal with, God already knows about it. And He wants us to... to uh, uh, bind together with him and the Holy Spirit. That, that's what Jesus said in, in, uh, the book, uh, in the book of John. Abide with him and he will abide with us. And, and then, and then, um, in that we can ask whatever we will. So it's according to his will that we are coming together with these situations of our lives that he knows about 
but we have no idea what the end's going to be or what the outcome is going to be, or we just just don't know what we're going to do about it. And But God knows. And so that's who we're joining up with, the one who knows all things. Amen. He knows the end from the beginning. Amen. And so that's a powerful position to be in, even though you're fourth <laughs> in the Trinity. <laughs> you, you're right there with the most powerful beings of the universe. Amen. So in that, and I, and I, I know I read the 18th verse and some of you are looking at that 18th verse and like, okay, but I noticed that he said in verse 19, he says, again, I say, and I said again, so he's saying it again. When did he say it the first time? If anything touching. And I thought about, um, I thought about um, when when Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And uh, Peter responded with a response saying, thou art the Christ, thou art the son of God. And Jesus told him, here I go with my notes again. And, and Jesus responded to him and told him, that what now, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you bind uh, loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, and, and all that good stuff. And it's like he gave him the keys to the kingdom to be able to, to carry on the church. That's what it was all about. To carry on the church. And so, and he, so he told, um, so he gave that to Peter. And, um, because I'm not steady right now, <laughs> I can't even read my notes, but I'm just saying, you know the story. And so, um, I had to go further with that because the reason I want to go further with that and into that, and you're going to see why, because we're going to be praying in agreement. And we're going to need the Holy Spirit. And, uh, okay, here's my references. Here's my references. Let's go to, uh, for the, uh, for all of this that we just did, let's look at a few, a few things here. And I'll bring it all together in a minute. Are you there? Are you with me? I don't hear anybody. I can't hear anybody praying. Couldn't hear nobody praying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Praise God. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 17. I'm just going to give you a little references on, on, on these verses that we just did. You know that Jesus was a fulfillment of the law. And if you listen to and read through the Gospels, you realize that a lot, everything Jesus did, he followed the law to a T. And he was teaching others as well. And not only did he follow it to a T, but he brought it on into the, the, uh, brought it on into the stage and time that they are in today. The kingdom of God is at hand and things are gonna, you know, things are gonna change a bit. They're gonna, but they're gonna get better. You're gonna get a better understanding of the law. And 17, go to 17 verse, verses 2. 2 through 6, if somebody can get that, Deuteronomy 17, verse 2 through verse 6. I have a reason that I want to go that far. So it says, um, do I have a reader? Uh, I think I can see this. <laughs> if there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God which the Lord thy God gives thee, man or woman, that has uh, worked wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or the moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou has heard of it, 
and inquire diligently and behold, it is true. And the thing concerns that such abomination is worked in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto the unto thy gates, even the man or the or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. At the month of the, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is um, worthy of death be put to death. Let me read that again. At the mouth, at the mouth of two or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to, be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. The hands, where, how far did I say I was going to go? I want you to hear verse seven. Okay. So hold on to verse six. Listen to verse seven. It says, the hand of the wickedness of the, I'm sorry, the hands of the wits, witnesses shall be first upon him to put up, to put him to death. And afterwards, the hands of all the people. So thou shalt put the evil away from among you. All right. Verse seven brought a thought to my mind and I hope you caught that and you got the image of it as well. But verse six lets us know that it takes two or three witnesses before you can condemn somebody to death. This was the Old Testament law that God has given to Moses. And so if one person come up and say, this person has done this and that, and, and they need to be put to death. Well, no, we need more than one person. We need a, you know, a fair trial is going to have to take, be more than one person. All right. And so that was, this was all part of the law. And Jesus, when he spoke these, when he spoke these words, and when he told, and, and when he um, gave gave these, he's following and he's using what people already know, what they already understand. Amen. And so when I read verse seventeen, guess who I thought of? What I thought of? What story? Did anybody uh, in verse seventeen read it right there? The hands of the witness shall be first among him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hands of all the people, so thou shalt put them, the evil one out of, uh, out from among you. What story came to your mind? I mean, it just popped in my mind when I read that. I'm like, oh. Okay, sister. I see Sister Dow's mouth move, Sister Mother. Did you did you move your mouth? Who else moved their mouth? Come on, I can't hear you all. All right, Sister Luella. I think it reminds me of uh, the woman at the well or something. The first he that has no sin cast the first stone. All right, you put two stories together there. It wasn't that woman, but <laughs> you got you got it. Somebody want to tell us that the story? Thank you put it there. <laughs> put it right there in perspective, Sister Lynn. You want to give it to us? <laughs> oh, you're at work. I'm sorry. No, I'm not at work. I'm at home, and actually, I didn't think of that. Um, I didn't think of that story. The story of Stephen came into mind because they stoned Stephen. <laughs> Even though he was not evil, but mm -hmm. they use this this method to prove themselves correct in stoning him. In stoning but, him. but the woman, uh, uh, the story about the woman who uh, was caught in adultery was caught in adultery and um, adultery. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and and they brought her out to to Jesus. Uh -huh. um, and it was really a, a Pharisee Sadducees trap because you know they always like to give Jesus these um, complicated puzzles, which, you know, mm -hmm. he's a puzzle master. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when when uh, 
when <clears throat> Jesus saw what they were doing, he asked them, let, you know, the one without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's Wonderful. What... Sister Lou. <laughs> Yeah, she beat you to it. She beat us to it. But that was the first thing that came to my mind when I said, "I'm saying, oh, this is what Jesus." I saw Jesus. He he never strayed. He wasn't. He was of the Old Testament. the The New Testament hadn't come into play. But although he is that new covenant, but he was he was um, being obedient to the word and living out the word, even in his conversation and his answers and everything that and and which really drove them crazy because they couldn't come against him because everything he's had to say and do, it was in the word. What can you say? And they, and they're supposed to be experts and they know he's right. So yeah, that's what he used. That's what he used. One of my favorite things in that story mm -hmm. was how Jesus bowed down and he started drawing in the sand because I saw you over there, mm -hmm. and I saw you over there, and they didn't know what he was putting right in that sand, so they were all accused. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I often said he he put a tic tac toe sign in the sand, and <laughs> you know, but nobody knows what he wrote. Uh, the uh, the sixth verse tells us that's that was the law. You got to have two to three witnesses. So he used what they knew. And understood. But in the sense of Matthews, he's talking about praying to the Father. Praying to the Father. And the Father hears him. And I'm right here in your midst. And I hear you. And where is Jesus right now? He's, he's in heaven on the right-hand side of the Father. Yeah, with his Father, yes. So they're both right there in, in the midst. He's with us. Whenever we're praying on one accord, as it says in the book of Acts, the Lord is with us, and He said He and He said He's with us. But let's see what. Let's some, get some pictures. So the rest of our lesson are basically pictures, pictures of those prayers of agreement that um, happened throughout the Bible, and, and where where how powerful they were. What what happened because of those prayers of agreement? So we're just gonna go right through our lesson. And see that, all right. So, um, just to make sure you see and catch capture the the full lesson. First, let's read our introduction, and so we can bring that in and 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 um, you know, focus our eyes on what we're really trying to get out of this lesson. So, in the introduction, if somebody would would re I don't know, Sister Sydney, are you available to read for us the introduction? Uh, I like to try to get different people, but uh, or Sister. You know, I, I I'm here. I just don't have my book. Oh, I'm so sorry. no problem, Sister Lou. Sister Lou, you want to read that? No book. Sorry, <laughs> Sister Brother El El Elder Brother Kai. Michael. Brother Michael volunteered. He, he said he could read it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to put anybody on the spot. I didn't. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The saints who have two sayings. The saints have two sayings, which have much merit for believers who will pray the prayer of agreement. Where there is unity, there is strength. And two heads are better than one. These sayings simply tell believers that there is power where more than one person agrees together. The early saints in the New Testament church went from house to house praying, eating, and fellowshipping together. It was easy for them to pray the prayer of agreement. The word of the Lord says, for where there are, where, excuse me, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, Matthew 18 and 20. Mm -hmm. According to Matthew 18 and 19, believers have been given the power of binding and loosing. Whatever, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever he shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. God has given them special power so that they, so that when they agree in prayer, he works for them. All right. God has given them special power. Good word, way to word it. And since um, we're in this, and I'm, because I don't want to stay on that part too long, I want to give you an example. In our praying together, there are situations situations 
and, and purposes of praying for something that has gotten in the church that shouldn't be in there. You know, so things happen and, and, and the pastor have to rebuke it and we have to, and we all see and we touch and agree that this thing needs to be out of here. Uh, sometimes in our service, some, um, Sunday service, we like the pastor or, or, or the elders would get up and say, uh, uh-uh, uh, this is, I, I, I feel a heaviness in here. We gotta, we gotta start praising God. Come on, let's praise God. We gotta get this heaviness out of here so we can reach heaven. And so, when we talk about binding and loosing, I had to look at some of the other, um, some of the other, um, translations, but the, but it's, it's, it says it right here in the, in this, um, in this lesson, it uses the word, um, binding and loosing, remitting or, or, or uh, remit. Or remit it, or, uh, or 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 um, tying up, or 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 holding back, keeping back, or 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 uh, the 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 binding is keeping something from doing what is doing, binding it, binding it, um, and um, the loosing is uh, setting free. In in this lesson, we're just going to say just a little bit on that part. And then, uh, if if you go, I want I found a picture. What came to my mind because I needed a picture of that. I wanted to see what he meant. Although Jesus gave a beautiful parable about the about binding and loosing a man, uh, some you know, enemy breaking into somebody's house, and uh, unless he binds the strong man, you know, he's not. But this one here is something that happened with Paul. If you go to First Corinthians five and three. 5 verse 3 through 5. And listen, listen to this. Uh, it says, For I verily, this is Paul, For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, and though I were, as though I were present, concerning him that has so done this deed and we'll talk about what that was the first few verses tell you what he did in the name of our lord jesus christ when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our lord and savior our our lord jesus christ to deliver such a one unto satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. In in um what Paul was saying in here, and if you read those first few verses, it's about a man who uh, uh he's talking about fornication in the church and being uh accepted in the church. He's talking about fornication, and um he's saying this person who's not willing to change, who's not willing to stop, who's not willing to turn his, uh, uh, repent of his sins and, and turn his life around. There's a point in time where we have to put people out, let them go, hand them over to their sins. In other words, it's like what, um, what, what the Bible talks, talks about in, in, uh, in, in the book of Rome, giving them over to their, to their own ways, give them over, let Satan beat them up. And they'll be, they'll be coming, run, running back. That's the hope. In other words, you give them, you just, just let them go. Just let them go. There's a point in time where you can, um, uh, the binding in, in this thing and the loosing in this thing is to either, you know, if he repents and the Bible talks about that, repents and stop doing what he's doing, then we have to love him and receive him. But <clears throat> there's a time when they just won't give up, won't give in. And I remember, I think about that, that um, question that Peter asked Jesus, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Seven times. And Jesus told him, what, 70 times seven? 70 times 70 or somewhere in there. <laughs> in other words, every single time. But you know what? <clears throat> As I was studying this, there's a time. 
there's a time if that same sin can persist, persist, just like we just saw here with Paul. And if that same sin persists, even, even when Jesus said 70 times 7, but he gave Peter the key to bind and loose. And he gave it to the church. And Jesus, when, when he was, um, when, when he was teaching in one of the houses and they sent down this man in, in the, um, from the roof, they opened up the roof and, and sent down this paralyzed man. And Jesus told him his sins are forgiven you. And they said, nobody can forgive sin, but God, you know, they were mumbling and grumbling. And Jesus said, and Jesus said, which is easier to forgive sin or to, to say, um, get up and walk that you're healed. And, um, God, Jesus has given us the authority and Paul used that authority right here. This is what I want to, he used that authority and the church, the Bible, the, the, the pastor and the unity of the church has that authority. We don't let sin continue in the church. Amen. We don't let it continue because that's, that's, that's like a bad seed and, and it, and it festers throughout the rest of your church, the, uh, throughout the rest of the people, because nothing's been done and everybody's saying, oh, well, I guess it's okay. No, it's not okay. So uh, I just wanted to give you a picture, a picture of that. I don't even know. Did you, anybody catch that or understand that or, 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 or feel what I was trying to say at least? We're going to go a little further and, and, and you get it. You get it. Um, any comments? Um, I, I was uh, quoting different scriptures to try to help you to get it. <laughs> I'll use the, uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, the sample of yeast in, 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 in dough and how yeast spreads. And that's how sin is. Yeah. If you let it go undone, it'll spread through the whole beautiful, dough. Beautiful. And that's, that's what happens in the church. That's it. That's it. That, that's the point I'm trying to make you. Sometimes you got to get rid of it. And he, Paul said, hand him over to his flesh, give it over to himself. He'll, he'll get over it. If he's a true believer, <laughs> he'll get back here on his own. But meanwhile, uh, let's go to first. Um, I, I just had to put that out there because that was a thought that came to my mind and I, and I was picturing that. Um, in, in our next scripture, we're going to start into our scriptures in second Chronicles 20. And these are different stories where prayer group prayers more than two or three people have to come together now we in these stories we want to look at several things we want to look at what was their agreement what were they coming together in agreement on what was the prayer about all right and then we want to look at how how did god resolve it for them what did god do because he said he's going to be in the midst when we come together in his name all right second first corinthians it's, it's really 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. Chapter 20. And my first, my, whoever gets it can start reading it. And I want you to go for, I want you to go all the way to verse 7. 3 to 7. Thank you. I thought I heard somebody say they had it. Okay. I lost my reading. And Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat. Oh, wait a minute, Sister Dow. Sister Dow, your sound is, is cracking up. That means somebody else should win. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Keep going, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, 
who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that was verse seven. And can you read verse seventeen? Let's get that in there. Verse seventeen. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. My header, starting at verse 3, is Jehoshaphat prayed for deliverance. If you read verse, uh, go and read those first two verses. Uh, verse one says, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to, um, to battle. Listen to verse two. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there come a great multitude against the from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be oh and behold, they be in um uh Tamar, uh, uh, uh someplace in Tamar, <laughs> which is which is uh I can't say those words, but it's it's talking about the the geography at that point, where they are at that point in time and how close they are and, and everything. And so Jehoshaphat in verse two, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat, who was Jehoshaphat? Anybody know his position? Was the king. Jehoshaphat was the king. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> King, King Jehoshaphat. All right. So the king. Now I want you to notice this. It's somebody that always lead out. Somebody has to be the leader. Somebody has to uh, make this known to the people that this is what's going on. And this is what we have to come together about. Jehoshaphat called together. Uh, verse four. And, and Jew, he called Judah together. Them. There's, uh, so he. Okay. He's. He seek the Lord and, and proclaimed a, a fast throughout Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord. Even out of all of the cities, Judah, they came, the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord and Jehoshaphat stood. And now he's about to lead the congregation. They all came together, Judah and Jerusalem and all the surroundings. They came together because the word got out as to what was happening. A cause for agreement in prayer. A cause for more than two or three. And in this case, they all came together, you know, so, so it could be two or three or a hundred or, or a thousand. When you know that you're about to be taken down, something's about to happen, something about, we're about to be attacked, the enemy is coming against us, we need to get together. One mind. You understand this? Whose side are you on? Amen? If we're all on, on the one accord and we all agree and we're all part of this one community, then we need to come together and we need a leader and we need our pastor. We need the Jehoshaphat to call the people together. Because if, if we don't have that leader, that one person who, 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 who would seek the Lord, everybody might go all their different ways, you know, and, and, and be captured. Everybody may just, just fall apart, you know, but we need that strong leader that will pull us together. And he's saying he was afraid too. We need the honesty. Amen. He was afraid too, but I'm the leader. And so I got to get this taken care of. We got to get together. He has to be strong in his speech and in his, and, and, and in the power of the Lord, because that's where our power and our strength is going to come from. But they, they were afraid, but they did what was, they were told. And we have to be obedient and follow. This is not a time to go your own way. 
because you can fall into a ditch. You can be, you can uh, get shot in this day and time or, or in that day and time. They had arrows and bow and, and somebody may see you and they just, you know, we have to come together in certain times, you know, more than just on Sunday. Something happens in this things that happen in this world that's going to cause us to come together and realize what a strong force we are. What a strong force we are. This, uh, introduction says we, we, uh, we had, we had this saying during the day where, um, where there, um, where there's unity, there's strength or two, two heads are, are better than one. We know we, there's times when we have to know that we need each other. We have to know. So in this story, we see what the, what the, what the, what the chaos was all about, what the trouble was. But God came through. He talked to him. That's what Jesus said. He said, I'll be in the midst. If you call on me, I'll save you. And that's why I have verse 17 read. Yea, ye shall, ye, um, shall not. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't see. Uh, it's talking. He says, uh, ye shall not. And this is God speaking. You shall, ye shall not need to fight this battle. <laughs> See, things go on and we think we have to be the one to deal with it. We have to, you know, and then, and, and that's that heaviness that we don't need. We need somebody that's bigger than us. Somebody's bigger than us who can lead us and who can guide us. And it's easy when you know you got a strong person leading. You know, we still, still know what's going on, but we trust our God and we trust that He has given us good leaders to lead. And so he says, you shall not fight this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. He's going to come through for us. He see the salvation of the Lord. Um, oh, 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 Judah and, and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord will be with you. Even though. He gave them instruction, even though he said, you don't have to fight, but he told them to go out. Sometimes we have to, we're part, we are part of the solution. We, God is going to use us. We're going to be the answer to the prayer, but we have to be obedient. Do it his way. Amen. His way. So, uh, so he said, okay, go out. And you know, people have to have that one mind. Jehoshaphat said, Fat said, God said, we have to go out there. Go out there. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. We know it's, they're bigger than us. We know there's more than them, them than us. But we are trusting in our God who said he is our salvation. He's going to save us. All right. That was the story there. They came together. They gathered together. They had a reason. They had a purpose. Amen. And we have to be together. We have to be one. Um, We have to be uh, realize that we are a community, a, a family of God. We have to have real, realize. And isn't it something that communities, even amongst the people of the world, know how to come together in the time of disaster, in the time of troubles, in the time of great need, time of great sorrow. We all sorrowed when Martin Luther King got killed. We all sorrowed when the president got killed. Although I was little during these times, I remember it happened. But the whole country, it was a, 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 a country thing. You know, it wasn't just the church. It wasn't just the world. It was everybody. And sometimes the whole country has to come together. But for sure, the church need to get involved when the country is in trouble. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, because we're still here and we're still a part of things. Let's go to our next one. Any comments on that one? Anybody see something that I didn't hit on that you want to comment? Our next one is, uh, come on, you got, don't, don't be afraid to take it further because uh, I'm laying the ground. I, I, I'm the one that's just laying the ground, but sometimes things click in your head that you don't even realize you knew, and they can be pro very profound. Profound. Sister Angela, <laughs> um, 
Um, just when you were speaking, and uh, I was just um, thinking, when you were saying that we all have to come together, and um, I was at a at the restaurant yesterday, and there was a lady sitting across from me, mm-hmm. and then she looked at me and she said, "You know, you have a spirit on you that I can see it in your smile." And when she said that, I was like. Wow, thank you. And then she started telling me how I looked like a woman she knew. So when she said it, my first thought, well, I pray that woman that I look like is a very good woman, (laughs) you know, and has a good spirit, you know, because most of the time when they say you look like someone, that's just my thought. It's like, Lord Jesus, let this person be a good person. Mm -hmm. But when you said that, when you were saying that we, we have to, um, basically be as one Mm -hmm. when we're praying and as a a unity, you know, that just made me, you know, feel like when I'm out there in that world and people see me, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see that spirit of God and to know that that spirit is on me. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm just, Pray that it's tied in with that oneness yeah. and us praying in oneness and praying for each other mm-hmm. and being on one accord for that prayer to be heard. Yeah. And that lady hugged me. Um, She's sitting there with her food and I'm looking at her food like, you're going to hug me and your food is right there. <laughs> but, you know, she did. She hugged me and she still yet still conversated with me. Yeah. But to me, that let me knew, know that that woman was a woman of God, mm-hmm. and there was a oneness there. Amen. Beautiful. And that, yeah. that, that right there is just so important for us to learn. And just by you speaking on uh, prayer, and I'm just learning this, that, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like, um, wow, if two or three or more is gathered in his midst, and is praying on for that one certain thing, that one point, then it's heard. So now I'm now I'm looking at prayer like, okay, when you pray it, you make sure that prayer you're praying is specific. Mm-hmm. Make sure that it's a prayer that's gonna help people. Make sure it's a prayer that's gonna deliver someone. So now you really have made me think now when I'm praying to really, really be mindful mm-hmm. of what I'm praying for and what I'm praying about. That's Thank good. you. That's good. That's good. That's what we want to get out of this, how to pray. She's getting out of this, how to pray. Amen. 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 And so um, praying in agreement. I thought about um, a question that Sister Marsha asked. Was that two lessons ago? Peace, peace, peace. Um, she, She asked the question, she says, because we've been talking on prayer. So does that mean that he, God does not hear you know, just one person's prayer. You have to all have the same, you have to all be together. Something to that effect. Uh, and right away, uh, uh, um, our, our, so it was our teacher was Elder Baxton. He said, no, he hears all our prayers. God hears all of our individual prayers. So yes, individually, we have to pray with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word if we want to be effective prayer warriors because we are all prayer words. I know we give that to a title. We give that as a title and uh, as though it's a gift, but God is calling for all of us to pray. Amen. And to know how to pray. So that was good, sister. That was good, uh, sister T. And let's go to, um, the next, the next one. I wanted, I was going to say this. I wanted to say this, you know, the scripture that says, uh, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God, starting with the belt of truth, meaning you got to know that word before you go out there into the battle. Amen. <laughs> but I thought about this. There's no long rangers. You, when you put on that whole armor of God, know that you're not alone. We are all called to put on that whole armor of God and we are all in the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So when, so we must 
realize and understand that we have to come together and realize that we're not alone. We have to see each other. We have to be amongst each other. We have to pray together. We have to eat together. <laughs> you know, we have to spend some time together to know that we are we are a, a, a community. We are the body of Christ. Amen. And so when you put on that whole armor of God, believe, know that you're not alone. That when I'm going out into the battle, but I'm, be, I'm there with my sisters and my brothers in the Lord. Amen. So, uh, yeah, I thought of that and I don't know. I didn't know where to bring it in, but that was a good point. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Nehemiah, who has Nehemiah, I hope you all, and the next one after Nehemiah is Acts, the first chapter, so if somebody could get Acts, and right now we're on Nehemiah, the first chapter, and it gives us only one verse, the 11th, or let's read that verse, and then we're going to go back and read uh, from 4 to 11, but let's see what the 11th verse says, <clears throat> it says, O oh Lord, I beseech you, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayers of thy servant and to the prayers of thy servant's servants who desires to fit to fear thy name and prosper i pray thee thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man for i was a cup bearer so anybody know who this man is this old man, mm hmm Okay, so he was a cupbearer to the who? He was a cupbearer to the king. I, I know you all are t talking. <laughs> Can't reach that, that, uh, mute button fast enough. So, and, but he was a cupbearer to the king. And so he said to this man, <laughs> he said, uh, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. This is Nehemiah talking. And if we go back to verse four and bring it on, bring it on, on down. Is that going to be too much reading? Um, verse four, one through, one through 11. Okay. Now I'll just give you a, a, a quick thing about this. Let's read the first two verses at least, because I want you to see what happened and what's going on here. Um, the word of Nehemiah, the son of, of Hadaliah, somebody, somebody want to read this for me? Cause I, I, I hate chopping up names. And anyway, he's a son. He has a father. <laughs> and this is how the Bible laid out. They always tell us who the fathers are. Um, but Hakaliah. And it came to pass in the month of uh, Chitzlu. Come on, people. Who's going to read for me? Uh, Brother Michael. Chitzlam. Uh-huh. Chitzlam. Okay. In that month, the 22nd year, as I was in... Keep your mic on. Okay. Okay. In the palace. So this is Nehemiah talking. He's in the palace at this time, and he gave us specifics as to when this happened. He says, "Go, uh, go, brother James, can you just read that for me, please?" Sure, appreciate okay. it. Okay. <laughs> now it happened in the month of Chislev in the twentieth year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah, and I came and asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the exile concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who has survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates are destroyed by fire. And as soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept. Mm -hmm. And I mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive to your eyes and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant. And now I pray before day, before you day and night, 
for the people of Israel, your servant. Okay. Confessing the sins mm -hmm. of the people of Israel, yeah. which we have sinned against you, even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes of your servant. Moses. All right, Brother James, thank you. We're going to stop right there. Then he goes into remember. <laughs> but this was Nehemiah. And have you know, did you notice that not only in Nehemiah, but the, in, 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 uh, when we read about Jehoshaphat, how they first worshiped God before they went into their petition, how they just let God know how awesome he was. How powerful God I know. And so, and, and, um, you know, we, we, and I've heard it said, and we have to be careful about what we say because I've heard preachers come off, come out like that. Lord, most high, wonderful, awesome. Uh, you know, get into that. Let them do it. Let them do it. Don't put that down because it sounds like their rhetoric. They are the leaders and they have to usher us in. We don't just jump in and start telling God what to do. And uh, it's, it's like, I've just, I just heard that, you know, uh, nobody have time to be listening to all that. We got to start praying. You know, we got to talk to God. Let them exalt God. Let them lift him up. Let them, I, uh, and sometimes we think it has to be in such a ooh, powerful way that's going to make us. And, and no, let them lead. Let them worship God. Let them praise God. Let them exalt his name on high because that's what God wants us to do. That's what he has called us to do. And so um, I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. I've heard that. I'm sure you've heard that. That is proper. That is scripture. It may not sound, you know, and sometimes we think that they're being boastful or proud trying to impress. No, they understand that this is how you do it and we have to follow. So I'm glad when we start out with worship, praise and worship and, and our prayers start out by talking to God and telling him how awesome and how wonderful, how merciful and gracious and holy he is. It's important because then we got his ear, you know, we got his ear. <laughs> he seeks those to worship him. Amen. And so in both of those lessons, in both of those lessons, they started out with the worship to the Lord. Amen. They started out worshiping him. And so we don't want to rush that because I think that's important in our prayers. But in this story, Nehemiah talked about himself, thy servant and thy servants. So it was not just him. It was a situation where Jerusalem was in ruins. These brothers came and they told him about it. They were already praying. So when he said, and thy servants, not only them, he knew that, you know, that the, the whole of Jerusalem, because there was just a remnant left and that there was a concern and there was a, a need for God to step in and do something. And so he joined in with the prayer and God, guess what? Like I said, he will use you in the answer to the prayer. Did I not say that? He will use you and he'll give you what to do. And so we have to be ready when we pray this prayer, be ready to step out, be ready to go, be ready to do what the Lord wants us to do for him to accomplish his work. He's going to use us because we're partnering with him. It's not a silent partner deal. Amen. It's not silent partner. We have to be ready to do what the Lord wants us to do. And so Nehemiah asked in his prayer that God will prepare the heart of the king. And he did in a mighty way. The king sent him, sent his soldiers with him, sent, gave him everything he needed. God would do it. Won't he do it? Amen. Amen. And amen. Ooh, I, I remember a song. I, I wrote it down. It just said it was we used to sing it. That's what my God will do. My sister, pick you up. He'll turn you around. That's what my God. That's what my God will do. Yeah. That's what my God will do. Oh, yeah. He'll fix you. He'll fix it. He'll fix the problem, the situation. We have to put our trust, our whole trust in him. We can't just say we trust in him and then we deal with the problem ourselves. We have to truly 
trust God and do it his way. Amen. Amen. So I think you're getting the gist of this lesson. Uh, and there's a lot in the discussion that takes each one of these. Um, it took Chronicles, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, and Second Paragraph. It talked about with Nehemiah. It gave this first sentence. It says, um, "When the believers know that God is in the midst, in His midst, He knows that He is praying according to God's will, which adds confidence, authority, and boldness to His prayers." for spiritual battle amen spiritual battle we don't have to do this battle alone nehemiah wasn't alone uh jehoshaphat wasn't alone the next one is esther she wasn't alone as that's in our um devotional these leaders those people that are in in position those people that are in the house that has the president's ear that has the king's ear that has the pastor's ear Huh? That's what it was with Esther. She had the king's ear. She had to take it easy. She had to do it wisely, but she went on in there and, but she called a fast and prayed a prayer of all the Jews because now this was a battle of all the Jews. It wasn't just, it it wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, her. And, but she led out. She, she said, if I perish, I perish, but I've got to do this for the sake of all of God's people. Amen. And so when she called that fast, even Mordecai, he took the message and they fast. The, the, I was reading that they had already been fasting out of fear. They had already been fasting and praying out of fear. Now she said, okay, three more days, three days fast and pray, you know, and they already, they already have been fasting. Oh my goodness. So anyway, sometimes it's good to wait till the pastor tell you to fast because if you're fasting five days a week already, he said, okay, we're going to go on a fast and you're going to like, uh, I just got over my fast, you know, like nothing wrong with that. But anyway, um, <laughs> we got to be on one accord in these things, amen, to help each other. Woo. So, but we know what a fast is. It's, it's for our, our own personal uh, uh, walk with God as well. But anyway, she called a fast. They came together. Guess what? Hangman hung on his own gallon <laughs> that he built. <laughs> Hangman. Is that where the game came from? Hangman? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll... Th- we don't know where things come from. You know the game, Hangman? Wasn't that his name? Pretty much <laughs> Hangman. And he built a gallow to uh hang all the Jews on. And he ended up being hung on it. Hangman. Hangman. I, t- I call him Hangman. <laughs> well, I put, still put That's that together. <laughs> yeah, I, I still put that together a long time ago. I'm like, his name is Hangman. Okay, okay. So anyway, that's the story of Esther. Esther Mordecai. Mordecai told her, this is the third, the, the one, two, three, the third, um, paragraph, um, on your, on page 31. Esther's uncle Mordecai told her that the Jews would be destroyed and that she needed to go to the king to intercede for her people. Amen. All right. Uh, he, he, he reminded her that she too was a Jewish, was of the Jewish nation and her life was at stake. Esther knew that, Esther knew that she could not approach the king without permission for it could mean death. And it had been 30 days since he had sent for her. She called Losing my place. She called the people uh, in the Jewish community, including her maids and servants, to fast and pray for three days. Then she told the servants to tell Mordecai that if she perished, she perished. This this was, uh, and this is where we have to talk about being bold and strong, not afraid. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the arms, 
strong arms of God. Amen. Because that, that was a real situation she had put herself in. But Mordecai reminded her. And I had to go back and, and read some of that because uh, actually Mordecai uh, said, you and your father's household will, will die if you don't do anything about it. But I went and read it. He, her mother and father had, was already dead and he was raising her. I'm like, I guess he was talking about, you know, I don't know who was the household. But anyway, um, he had to put some fear in her. <laughs> She had, but she came through. She came through and she called a fast and all the people joined in on it. And the king, he couldn't take back what he did, but he could read right into it. <laughs> and he told the people, hey, protect yourself. It's going to happen because I can't take it back. But you have a right to protect yourself. Amen. Great things will happen if we come together. Then we can change the world. We can change the, the world's conditions, situations come together. I remember, I know some of you might have thought about at this point in time when the, when that virus came out and all we were hearing is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. But I'm like, okay, so let's pray. Let's call on God. <laughs> Are we in agreement? We're going to turn from our wicked ways. We need God. We need help. And so, and so that was the leaders. They were calling on us to turn from our wicked ways and let's go to God together. Amen. We need to do things together. There's a time and a place, even within the church, where the body of Christ, they have to be on one accord and we have to be in each other's face we have to know what's going on even in the world and we have to be in agreement with what's going on in the world what does God's word say about it? not your opinion because there's some things that's going on in the world that we need to come together and pray about because it's going to affect the church it's going to affect some of the some of our pastors may be put in prison because of it. It's going to be a, affect the, the your, some of your jobs. It's going to affect us because we're not in agreement with everything that they do. So we need to come together and pray the power of God to break to break the hold of that's on this world that's causing these things to happen. I don't know. Uh, I, are you getting the gist of this lesson? This lesson is telling us that the prayer of agreement is important. And uh, even on the day of Pentecost, they were all in that upper room praying in agreement because Jesus had promised to send the Holy Spirit. There was a promise and they were all in that upper room praying, doing what Jesus, he told them to go back to and go back to Jerusalem. And, and they went and they were all waited there for the Holy Ghost. We call it tarry. We, they, they tarry because that's what the scripture said. And so um, there's some things that we need to tarry over. It may not just happen right away. So we can't break bands because it's taking too long. Until God give us a word, an answer, hold on, stay with it, keep up with it, stay in it. Amen. It's your family, my family, our people, your people. The body of Christ everywhere. Amen. And there's one thing we can pray for, and that is the body of Christ because there is persecution going on because of the body of Christ in different countries. We think uh, these little incidents where somebody flick us off because they don't want to hear about it. We get, we get so, you know, hurt. We not haven't been thrown in jail yet. We haven't been thrown to the lions yet. Come on now. Let's pray. Let's stay together and let's pray for those saints who are going through the persecution that is moving throughout the world. And one day it's going to meet us right here, but we've already been praying. We've already, we're waiting for it. But Jesus already told us that we're going to suffer persecution. If he went through it, they didn't love him. Why do we think they're going to love us? Amen. That's his point. But good lesson. Good lesson. It's a lot here. Get back into it. I, I had notes and um I just got so caught up with Elder Bassin and, and that 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 teaching there. Our our essential verse strength is in two or three core ropes. 
Strength is, is in two or three core ropes, for it is not easily broken. And and I, there's a scripture in um, Ecclesiastes that talks about those three or four, or was that Isaiah? Well, anyway, um, praise the Lord, thanks. <laughs> I think I'm going to let it go at this point and give it back into the hands of the pastors. A, a good lesson. Get back, get on into it on your own and um, see what you can get out of it. Amen. And then if you get more out of it, share. Share it. Call somebody. Ooh, you know what? This, 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 this thing got really deep. I started looking into it for myself. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> I give it back into the hands of the pastor. Let us all say amen for Sister Angie. What a wonderful, wonderful lesson. Amen. She done a wonderful Praise job God. just Praise talking God. to us about prayer in agreement. And we thank God. In the introduction, when when um Brother Michael was reading the introduction and it said uh back in the, the New Testament days, churches went from house to house praying and eating and fellowshipping and praying. The first thing came to my mind was um, Faith Temple, for those of you that was here, was our YWCC. And those women, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. Those women prayed. They came together and they prayed and fasted and prayed and seek God for what they wanted. And they were doing it for one another. One of their sisters was in trouble. They all came together Amen. and prayed and asked God to send deliverance, send healing, send peace. And that's one reason why the church is where it is today is because of that collective prayer. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather was a praying man and the Lord used him mightily. But I also uh, seen these women come up. And um, I don't know, I forgot what night it was. Mother Peace may remember what night they used to have YWCC. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. <laughs> YWCC. And they was there. And um, they would bring friends in that got saved and everything. And it was all because of the prayer of agreement. They agreed with the prayer and they went to God for what they needed. And that's what we need to do today. We got to remember, sisters and brothers, when one of us are in trouble, let's call somebody and say, let's go to God. Let's fast and let's pray and let's go to God that he will send deliverance and that he will send healing. Yes, I thank yes, God yes. for the lesson on tonight. Thank you, Sister Angie. God bless you. Um, we're praying for our president and we also <laughs> thank God for each and every one of you that's on the line tonight. Sister Marcia was out working with her husband tonight and, and they wasn't able to really comment or anything, but uh, they are on the line and I appreciate, appreciate that. Um, we're going to dismiss and then um, I'm going to pray and then we're going to, uh, I need to do two, two other things here. Father God in heaven, we thank you once again. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for our teacher tonight. Lord, we ask your blessings to be upon each and every one. Oh, God, even as we come together, agreeing, oh, God, that you touch, deliver, and you set free, that you do what you need to do for your people tonight. Oh, God, you are a mighty God, and we thank you tonight. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for peace of mind tonight. Even mother, kid, sister, oh, God, even as she's in the hospital, oh God, you know what to do. Strengthen your people everywhere. Bind Satan, cast him out of the mind, cast him out of the wheel. And Lord, and we'll continue to give you praise. We thank you for our teacher tonight. Continue to bless her, continue to smile upon her. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. Elder Terrell, I see your hand raised. Amen, Pastor. Um, I just wanted to make a note. Um, uh, Sister, and Aunt, Sister Angie and I, we talked about this uh, last Sunday that on next Tuesday, uh, her and I are going to switch lessons. So um, for anybody that follows, follows along on the lesson, uh, I'm going to be teaching uh, lesson nine 
for next Tuesday. And Sister Angie will teach lesson eight on the following Tuesday. So we're going to keep the days. We're just going to switch the lessons. So I'll be teaching praying and faith. And then Sister Angie, she'll teach uh, praying and thankfulness. No problem. You two work together and we thank God for for the um, togetherness that you have. God bless you and thanks for the information. I just wanted to say that we want to remember um, Sister Rennell and Sister Lou. They're going to be flying out this weekend to Hawaii. So we want to remember them and asking God for uh, safe travels for them. Let them go and have a good time and then uh, send them back home safely. On the uh, on Thursday, I believe Thursday is Sister Angie's. Want to ask God to bless her and her husband. I believe that's their anniversary. This coming Thursday, Sister Angie Smith and Brother David Smith. So happy yes, anniversary yes, to yes. them. We thank God for them. Also, Sister Rennell, uh, her birthday is going to be on Saturday. She will be gone. I don't know if she'll be able to get on Friday night. So what I was going to do, I have three birthdays that we just want to sing happy birthdays. Sister Rennell is one. She may be on Friday night. If you, if you get on Friday night, and I don't forget, that's just a bonus for you. <laughs> um, but tonight, tomorrow, is Deacon Sean's birthday. He's not on tonight, but uh, Deacon Sean and our own Deacon Irie Benson's birthday is tomorrow. If you don't mind, if you can unmute yourself and let's sing happy birthday to these three and happy anniversary to Sister Angie and her husband. Amen. Unmute yourself, God please. Bless you. So, happy birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday